just starting right now, so getting that microphone position out of the way with. Hey, it's uh, it's me and also Eric. Say hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. We're uh, I'm just going to do some more streaming because it's Labor Day and I got some time off, and that doesn't happen a lot. So I'm blinding in the light of day here, coming through an actual window. Um, Eric, are you blinding? Um, what? No, deafened, no, I guess. Dark. It's, no. it's very dark out. It's very, it's very dark out? Really? It's been raining most of the day. Yeah. Oh, we must not have gotten the rain yet. Because it's, it's supposed to rain like tonight here, but right now it's kind of yeah, glary. That's, that's what they said here too, but it rained this morning and then now it's been like super windy out. Oh, oh weird. Morning. Hmm. Well, sorry to hear that. That's okay. Um, it happens sometimes. Yeah. You know what else happens sometimes, Eric, is Kaizo. It's fall, man. It's time for raining and kaizo and mm -hmm, exactly. Um, I just wanted to show off a little bit here. I have made some progress since last time we did this. Uh, this I guess is I better turn this on, man. This is so serious. Well, I do want to have some idea if people can hear you because I don't actually know if that's true, and I'd like to have some idea if my video is not constantly dropping sync. Um, I've actually got the stream up on my uh, little tablet off to the side, and it's way behind where I am right now. Um, but it's going to be hard for me to both Kaizo and watch whether my frame rate is any good. So apologies if the quality of this video is kind of crappy, but that's just the way things have been going with my internet lately. I don't know. I can kind of hear myself, so we'll okay. say it's a success. All right, good. Uh, won't ask for more than that. I can talk more quietly if that'll help. <laughs> I can lean into my microphone. I'll yeah. That might help. So yeah. this is still Baby Kaizo Mario. Uh, it's not the only game that I've been playing, but it's the one that I've sunk the most time into. And uh, I think last time we did this, I showed off a little bit of the first two levels. And since then, I've cleared like 15 or so different levels. Um, and the first world is not too bad, but it gets it's starting to get pretty hard where I am now. Uh, what I'm going to do to just kind of warm up a little bit, um, what I'm going to do apparently is not have an A button. Oh, because the castle's been destroyed. I can't go back there. I was gonna say. I thought I thought I was on the pipe. We're seems to, like a bad time if you don't have an E button. We're off to a good start. Um, you may recall a lot of swearing yesterday as I attempted to mm -hmm. complete this level here, which is called uh, Forest Run. I want to say. Um, so this one gave me fits. I spent I think 400 lives on this level. I just That's wanna... a lot of lives. Yeah, and I just want to say I got farther in that first attempt than I did for about the first two and a half hours of that. So, learning stuff is fun. It's really satisfying. Um, I am now using a different setup, a different controller, and a different monitor. So I think it's actually going to take me a little, a little while to kind of get feel for this streaming setup because I haven't used my TV and a wireless controller. Anyway, um, guys, it was fun, and I mostly just want to see if my stream will hold together. So I've turned my bitrate down. Oh, great car alarm outside. But we don't need to talk about Kaizo, we can talk about whatever. What you doing on your Labor Day? Um, nothing. I'm waiting for the rain to go away. I did some laundry, I hung it out, and then I brought it back in, and then I hung it out again, so I'm kind of... That's kind of how laundry window, goes. Hoping that it doesn't uh, rain, so it doesn't get wet again. Mm. But... The little bits that I can manage to watch on my tablet seem like they're not doing too badly. I've uh, Yeah, like I said, I dropped my bit rate down from 3,000 yeah, to 2,500. Looks all right. I didn't realize you could spin jump the magic things. Yeah, I mean, certainly in Kaizo, I think they've learned every enemy what their properties are, so they'll give you that if they want, if like a floating thing you can bounce off in the middle of the sky, that's one you see a lot. Um, like uh, the dry bones also, like if you if you spin jump off of them, you bounce high, whereas if you were to spin jump off a, like a turtle or a, or a Goomba, you would just destroy it and, and drop down right away. So if you're in the middle of a long chain of spin jumps, like I was earlier, then yeah, they put dry bones in so that you can keep, so you can kind of modulate whether you're going to jump high or not. Anyway, I'm not going to stay on this level for too long because I already spent a really long time on it. Um, but I just kind of want to. This has been the biggest <laughs> setback for me, like the biggest sort of sticking point for me so far in this particular hack. Oh, there you go. Anyway, I think I'm doing all right. I'm not going to try and finish it again. Um, I also want to show off this really cool level that comes right after it, which is called Sky Tree Junior. So this is kind of a, a classic Kaizo. Uh... That's a good. That's a fucking good name for anything. <laughs> I know. Uh, so this it, is a classic. It could be an anime. It could be a character in a JRPG. It could be an album title. Sky Tree Junior is just a good. Um, like a Japanese punk song would be real good. 
So this is a kind of classic Kaizo type level where you have to beat a growing vine up a series of obstacles through the level. Yeah. Um, I will say, I think I really feel a difference between playing through the capture card and playing on my TV, and it is not a positive difference. Well, uh, when you're having to be extremely precise, any kind of little bit of lag is going to be a bad time. Yeah, but I didn't really, like, I knew that there was a little bit of lag going through the, the bypass on the capture card, but now that I've been doing this for a while, I can really tell the difference. Yeah. Um, so I don't really know what the solution there is, aside from buy a CRT and do simultaneous video output. Huh? That'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Um, but anyway, so you see, I didn't make it to this block in time. What you're about to see, I'm running up the, the death blocks. Yeah, yeah, I pretty much caught up. So I didn't, I didn't, well, I spent a little while sitting on this Run block. Run the muncher, here. Mike. Yeah, well, you have to. It's your only, it's your only way out. Death, the sweet embrace of death is your, <laughs> your only way out. Um, but this level is really tight. Like, there's almost no, uh, there's almost no slop permitted if you want to, if you want to so make what's, it. What's, what's baby Mario got dangling out the back there? We need the little chain. You know, I have, let's... oh, I'm going to make it. Oh, I made it. Hey, nice. Yeah, I've gotten way better at this game. Oh, yeah, watch out, watch out. Careful. Yeah, don't, uh... I don't want to get chucked. Not, not right before the halfway point. Uh, what does he have dangling out there? Uh, I just, it's kind of a somewhat it's full looking diaper, huh? Advanced. Yeah. It's a, it does look like he might be in need of a change. I mean, if I was doing half the stuff he was, I'd probably have a little diaper. Some real scary stuff in this game. Yeah. Well, I got good news. What? I finished downloading Amplitude, Ant Bully, Comma The, and Ant's Extreme Racing, and I'm on to the PlayStation 2 <laughs> Ape Escape games. So, <laughs> so uh, how, long I is, <laughs> how long is this going to take exactly? I have a feeling this is going to take me at least the rest of the week. Wow. I guess, to get done with. You... I just started, like, last night. I, I just installed my... So the Internet Archive has all the PlayStation 2 games yeah. up in a, in a big dump. And I so I bought an 8-terabyte hard drive so I could uh, <laughs> download all of them. It'd you're a like preservationist. Five terabytes or something. Five yeah, terabytes. I, I, just, I want all the video games. I already got all the PlayStation games. And it's a I great project. Library, so so, for, so what, you've got a PS2, right? Yeah. I do have a PS2. What kind of PS2 do you have? Just, I have the one that I got in 2001 that I bought with my... I get a reading scholarship for being like the person that had books with him the most. It was just like 500 bucks, so I bought a 27-inch CRT TV and oh, a PlayStation nice. 2. Yeah. So it's a fat, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's the, the OG PlayStation 2. So you're in the same boat as me, which is that we have original PS2s. Um, there's a new hack, I think I might have talked about it a little bit on the stream. It's called a Free DVD Boot, and it's not currently available for FATS, but I think it probably will be in a little while if the if the people who do these things get motivated. Uh, and it lets you just basically burn a custom DCD, and then you can play any game you want. Um, that so seems alright. Yeah, it's super cool, and like... You know, like, I've been on a kick, like Joe, using light guns, and so I got some Time Crisis games, but I don't really want to buy all the old Time Crisis games. Like, none of the money's going to the developers, so I don't feel bad uh, right. copying Selling them. Selling it to some, yeah, some whatever reseller. Dude on, on eBay, eBay, you know, like, whatever. So Somebody I, who raided a blockbuster when they went out of business. Oh, you know, maybe it's their own collection. I don't even know. I don't care. The point is... I don't want to, like, some of them are pretty expensive. I don't want to spend, like, 200 bucks on Time Crisis games. Well, and if you send me a 6 terabyte hard drive, Mike, I'll, uh, in about a month and a half, I'll dump them on there and send them <laughs> on up to you. So. Well, anyway, the only thing is that for now, neither one of us, I don't think, can use that particular uh, exploit. Oh, so close. That was yeah. really close. Gotta get munched. That was the last block. I would have I made it through. But, like, getting this stuff, like, within a few tries... I mean, it's all muscle memory because I spent so long on this level the other day, but it's pretty cool to see that I can still do it way better than when this I first started. This level seems way more fun than some of the other ones I've This, this level, tried. yeah, this is way more fun. It's a really entertaining challenge, but but you have no loose, like, no slack at all if you want to yeah. get done. Anyway, I'm very proud of you for uh, doing this archiving project, and I'm sure <laughs> eventually I will be asking you for some of those. Uh, frequency, actually. You said amplitude, but frequency is one that I used to have a physical copy of. And uh, I thought that game was really cool. But at the time, I didn't like electronic music that much, so I kind of traded in for Amplitude, which I didn't like as much. But now I'm more into electronic music, so I'd love to give Frequency another well, go. in two weeks when I get to F. <laughs> I'd ask you if you have a bandwidth cap on your uh, 
No, there's no we don't have internet yet. Okay. I wish I could get the gig internet here, but I can't. Mm. There are some places. You just gotta buy that house, man. Yeah, I gotta buy one of those houses on the main main drags, and then I can get in there. Oh, are they in the town? Uh, n well, no, it's like, there's like, so like, this is a rural area, so there's like, Whoop. some, there's like oh. four or five main roads that go through the area, and those are the roads, if you get a place on or just off of those roads, are the ones that have really fast internet. Man, I've street viewed where you live, I thought that was the main street. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Um, but this this place can only get. I mean, it's fine internet. It's you know whatever, fifteen up, hundred down or whatever. But yeah, any Should, gig. It's plenty for streaming at least. At least. Right. For... Oh yeah, that's fine for most things. But... I can't give you I a mean, hard also, time. I think that the I think that the internet archive thing just doesn't let me download that fast. Like, Maybe. I mean, if I was downloading this stuff off of Steam, it would go a lot faster. They probably don't actually want people pirating hundreds of gigabytes of uh, or hundreds. Yeah. Right. Terabytes Listen, of if, PS2 if games. If this was on like the Pirate Bay or something, I just engage my VPN and download it that way. And I prefer to do it that way, but it doesn't seem like it is. Um, like I said, I found there's a there's a couple of private torrent sites that are dedicated to video games, but they're like invite only. So yeah, um, I mean, also, how much of a rush are you metal, in? I don't know if my metal torrents dot uh, invites from when I used to write about metal or still would be worth maybe metal. not worth as much as you're hoping at this point <laughs> hey and that one they have one for extreme wrestling torrents and uh one other one that but I don't think that those are at, like because there's like some big like movie and music torrent uh like private trackers that exist too but right I don't know. I don't even want to download music by the gigabyte at this point. Like, never. Oh, yeah. You know, I want to. Well, I want one album a week, basically. Yeah. I will. A lot of it is with the advent of man camp. Honestly, is that it just makes it like, so like, back when I used to write about metal a lot, like in the early two thousands, that website was really useful because, like, a lot of that stuff would, a lot of stuff would like come out in Sweden and then not show up in the U.S. at all, or like for months if like candlelight records or century media or something picked it up and released it after the fact but like people would just plus back then you could just like type in there were a lot of blog spots that were just like dedicated to music piracy basically but most of right. that's all gone um, it's gone underground yeah but uh but anyways um now with Bandcamp, like back then like there was no way to just like listen to music you know what I mean? Like, you yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff out. I, I used mean, to buy albums on spec and just be like, well, I hope I like this album right, $15 dollars worth or and pay $15 for a CD. And maybe if you were lucky, you got to hear one song off of it. Um, especially then, especially if it was like indie stuff or like weird metal stuff, like it was almost impossible to get any kind of preview. But now yeah. it's all, if it's not on Spotify or something like that, it's on Bandcamp and you can just listen to it. So there's no point and me downloading gigs and gigs of music because I can just listen to it and go, eh, I don't really like this. And if I do like it, I can buy it for like seven bucks most of the time. You disappear, know? you stupid shell. I mean, I had a, it was a different genre, but I had the exact same experience because I was buying folk albums. And sometimes, oh, yeah. and like, I literally paid $35 for like for a CD. Uh, and that was, that was bought at like the really big CD store. Oh, damn it. I got to do the double shell jump. This is going to be really hard. And yeah, it was just like, well, I knew the band. I was like, okay, this will probably be good. But, you know, how often did you want to take that kind of risk and just hope that you like the album for $35 worth? Nowadays, Not very it's, often. It doesn't have, you don't have to anymore. So, And, you know, if, at like a big enough store, sometimes they would accept to open it and let you listen to it a little bit and just be like, whatever, we can reshrink wrap it or we don't, you know, we don't care. It's not, it's not our money. Yeah, there was a, I had, if I drove to, there was a place in Buffalo that would do that for me that had like listening i think it was just like a media play or whatever but it was a, like a big one and i was friends with the woman that managed it it was a media play um uh, that's like fye sam goody okay. that was like the chain of music stores basically most of them kind of suck ass but um that one in particular was pretty good because it had been like the person that ran it had owned an independent store and then that got put out of business and then they were in charge of running the oh i got the double shell jump but i didn't get high enough to, to make the ledge you got to watch the stream in about 20 seconds <laughs> i'll let you know when i see it double shell jumps are so brutal 
even resetting to try the double shell jump again is really brutal because if one of the shells goes off the screen, you lose it and then you have to die and no yeah. shot. I actually made it through the section. Practice, they could almost just give it to you, like put you in a smaller area and then let you do it so the shell would bounce. I look, then you got to dodge a bouncing shell. Well, the problem with the double shell jump is you got two shells to keep alive. So even trying to stop the one that you messed up and then not, not kill the other one can be really tough. Um... Oops, no, I just sent that shell over to the side of the wall. I could skip this. I did this section of the level um, last time I played, and then I got to the halfway point, and then I kind of got stuck on the next bit. But I want to, I mean, it never hurts to practice a double shell jump because it's real hard. This level is being nice because it's it's kind of not, there's no time pressure on the double shell jump. Um, yeah. There's a little bit of pressure in that I've already done a single shell jump to get to where it is, but... I'm kind of recalibrating my fingers to the different feel on this uh, the setup that I have here. I probably won't become a professional Kaizo streamer using my uh, <laughs> capture card. We all gotta have a dream, Mike. Yeah. I do have a dream. I have a Kaizo dream. Um, my Kaizo dream is to try and be good enough at these games by the time Grand Pool World comes out, uh, 3 comes out that I can actually play it at release. Which is a really super hard and extremely, <laughs> like... Uh, it's really impressive because it's filled with lots of custom, uh, like, coding and stuff to make things that weren't possible using the original engine, and it's just got, like, absolutely, like, devious secrets, and, uh, you know, it's all custom music everywhere, and the most, the most creative of trolls. I have to just settle for Splunky 2. But that's procedural, man. That's not handcrafted. You want to know that someone put that freaking fish at exactly the spot where it was going to get you after three minutes of grueling platforming. You know how people say, I feel seen? I think that's mm -hmm. the I think that's the point of the Kaiser Troll. Somebody knew exactly what you were going to do and set out to ruin your day in a very this specific way. This is the most way. natural angle for this jump, so obviously you can't be allowed to take it. Yeah, you know that that's literally it. All right, you know what? I I just hit the door by accident, but it's a sign. Let's, this is the part where I left off last time I was playing, uh, and it is nasty. I got to the point where I could do this. Oops, this first jump pretty consistently. Ah. This controller is really squeaky. I don't know if you can hear it. I hear some like rattling or something. Well, like it kind of goes grink grink grink. Is that the D-pad? It's the controller. It's like the frame of the controller that flexes. Can you tighten up your uh, whatever bolt? I don't know. All right, I made it past the first jump for once. Um, What's in that question mark block? You actually, actually, I watched a stream of someone who tried to get it and then couldn't. Oh, that was really close. That backward shell jump is what's been kind of killing me lately, and I, I came very close to getting it that time. Uh, yeah, that's just ornamental, sadly. Oh. Yeah, I was pretty consistent on this first shell jump coming out of the pipe last time I played, but I'm not feeling it right now. Listen, it's all the lag, man. A couple extra MSs in there. I mean, honestly, it, the funny thing is that this feels laggier than when I play with a wireless controller on an HDTV. So, I mean, I guess I'm on an HDTV still, but... This is... I'm just on my main monitor using the pass-through from my capture card, but... But, uh, yeah, I guess the, the capture card adds just enough lag to make this kind of thing really hard. I don't know, man. Part, I keep, like, kind of wanting to look for, like, a 17, 20-inch CRT that I could sit on my computer desk next to my main monitor, and then I could... You know, then you can do the, um, the analog and the digital video out simultaneously capture the digital and, and just play off the analog. I don't know why I'm completely failing this jump so many times. But, like, I, I just got rid of the CRT TV not long ago. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I got my parents uh, kind of nice Sony. I don't... I'm not even in the ballpark on this shell jump anymore. I don't, I don't understand. There we go. Oh. Yeah, so my parents were getting rid of theirs, which, you know, that makes sense, right? And it was like a 27-inch Trinitron, I think. Uh, like a pretty nice Sony, and it had S-Video on it. So I, I swapped out my old Samsung, which I bought myself in like 2002 to play, uh, to play Perfect Dark on. And I couldn't see a world in which I needed two 
like 20 something inch CRT TVs and I still can't if, to be honest but part of me really wants to have like a little compact one that I can stick next to my computer monitor so that I can mm -hmm. do this kind of stuff except that I stream like one hour out of every month so it seems like a lot of infrastructure for the amount of streaming I do this depends on if you get the space for it I guess well there's a chunk of room on my desk and right now it's occupied by a scanner which I basically decided I'm never going to use again now that I have a good phone, like, a scanner just seems like doesn't have any reason to exist at all. Yeah. Have you had to scan a bunch of documents lately? I couldn't tell you the last time. Probably when I was in college was the last time I had to scan anything. I mean, we're coming up on probably almost 20 years ago at this point. I need to go back to the tape and see how I made this stupid jump because I can't do it anymore. I don't know what's going on. I got this thing like 50 times yesterday just the first one yeah I, I was getting it like every one out of two times and now I've and now I'm not even close I've, I've gotten over like one time out of ten yeah you're well you must be what do you get you like kick the shelf there you sooner go or I, I did it I did it one time just there and then I missed the second jump it looks like you're off by the same amount almost every single time well I wonder if that's the timing difference between this and my regular setup I'm kicking too early, so maybe I just gotta relax, you know? Slow down, you move too fast. At least yeah, a couple of... It, when yeah. you hit it, the Mario is, like, at the cloud, basically. And when you miss it, you're going, like, kind of over it. So... I don't know if that's probably not useful, but... I think getting closer to the wall, I think, helps. I got it that time. There we go. Alright, so this is the hard part. Yeah, still hard. But uh, what I might do is um, I might switch away from this one and play that other one that I was playing the other night when I talked to you, which is uh, Quickie World 2. Okay, yeah, Closer to the Wall is, is helping out a lot. Yeah. I'm getting more consistent now. We were talking about graphics card that other night. I'm still not sure what I want to do, but so tempted by the 3070. I, yeah, I don't know what I want to do either, honestly. It's really... Those new ones are pretty good. What I want to do is uh, go back in time and not buy the one I bought <laughs> two years ago. You had, you, you know, you had your time together. You got control. I, I got... There was control. It was very good. You could start playing Minecraft. Oh, man, that's the closest I've come to getting that backwards shell jump. Yeah, I could play Minecraft with RTX... Uh, what else is going to have good ray tracing? They announced a couple things that were going to have new ray tracing added to them. Didn't they as part of the big graphics card reveal? I think so. Cyberpunk will have it. I mean, when is Cyberpunk I really didn't, because I didn't, I knew that the, like, the next generation would be a lot better, but I kind of thought that this one would be, like... I figured the the ray tracing stuff would get a lot better, but the overall performance maybe would... And in fact, they kind of went the other direction. Right. So. Like, the ray tracing is just the ray tracing, but now the, they just made them way more powerful. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they'll handle ray tracing a lot better as well, but... Curious, yeah. It would be great if ray tracing wasn't such a huge hit, because I can see myself with a 3070 very often being in the position where I have to choose between resolution and ray tracing. Yeah. Which I think, I guess, if I'm being honest, probably I should I always go ray tracing in that yeah. case, but... I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. I mean, or at least it won't come on, be Come on, come like... on, yes! <laughs> Sorry, I probably just... Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I probably just blew out the audio on that. This is why I play this game. It's so satisfying when you get something right like that. Mm -hmm. Or when you just remember how to do the freaking first shell jump in the level. That's also kind of nice. Yeah, I can't remember what was gonna get ray tracing. Oh, you know what? The Witcher. The Witcher is gonna get. Uh, it's gonna oh, get. Really? It's gonna get an unspecified like next gen upgrade that I think will be free to PC players. Uh, and so the most likely solution there is throw some ray tracing, and I would assume, right? Like, what does the Witcher really need to look better than it does? I think I think better lighting is probably the most important and easiest thing that they could add to that game. Hey, a second one. Come on. No. Okay, I got the shell jump, but it was too late. 
I don't think I'm quite ready to go back to Witcher 3 yet, but... I mean, honestly, I went back to play Blood and Wine, and I had a good time with it, but after, but like, six or seven hours in, I was kind of like, you know what, I played a lot of this game. I don't think I really want to spend that much time on it again. I liked it a lot. It's a great game. One of my favorites of the decade, but, you know, it took 60 hours to finish the first time, and then I did Hearts of Stone. So, Blood and Wine may go uncompleted. I don't know if I'll ever be in the mood to sink another 50 hours into The Witcher. It's kind of a big ask. Do love those characters, though. Okay, I've, once I've lost the shell jump again. Almost had a bad time. Have you got any single player stuff on the go, or are you just mostly playing Apex these days? Um. Well, I just restarted Wasteland 3. Oh. What? Which is um, that game like? Because, I mean, I know it's based on really old those... computer or role playing games, but does it still yeah, have that? It's, it's one of those. So, um, when you're wandering around, it's kind of like a traditional CRPG where there's like chests and NPCs and stuff. You get treasure. Chests and know. NPCs, my two favorite things. Yep. It's an overhead perspective, and then when you go into combat, it goes into, like, tactical grid XCOM-style combat. Oh, okay. So, um, it's kind of... I mean, you know, there's a lot of games that are kind of like that. Like, even old uh, OG XCOM is a little bit like that, too, like, sometimes, but... Um... Yeah, I mean, well, OG XCOM, yeah, when you send people on missions, then you're in... Right. There's places when you're not in combat, you're just wandering around on a map, and then you go into combat, and so positioning is important. And um, it's a little like it the, sounds like the old Baldur's Gate games, game maybe that came out. Or I mean, Wasteland Two is like this is a lot like Wasteland Two, obviously. Yeah, I just haven't played any of the Wasteland games. I was I was trying to think. It sounds kind of like it's along the lines of maybe a Baldur's Gate or I guess a Divinity, like a. Uh yeah, kind of yeah. Divinity is a good comp. Baldur's Gate is a good comp, except the it's turn-based combat instead of real-time uh baldur's you know, gate not... oh baldur's gate was pausable is that it yeah you could pause and cue oh and you couldn't, they closed uh, that time but you couldn't uh... sorry baby yeah, let's see here all right this is good I'm, I'm getting back into the flow here that, backpack, I guess. that backward shell jump though that's brutal yeah, trying to get out between the things there. Well, I just I haven't had a chance to practice that kind of thing in, in a safe situation. Like I learned, to Kaizo has single and double shell jump practice rooms where you can just throw yourself at the problem until you get it. But yeah. this is like a higher intent, higher intensity, higher stakes situation where it's like, all right, I've already gone through two pretty tough jumps, and now I don't want to mess it up. So. Eh. Um, but yeah, so uh, Wasteland, it's one of those, there's not a ton of those, very few actual games that are like, mm, there's games cool. that are similar, but there aren't a lot that are exactly like that, so it's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, uh, so like in the, in the first Wasteland, and I think in... Uh, the Wasteland 2, you had to create a character to start, but this one kind of does the Divinity 2 route where it gives you some like pre gen characters that you can pick from. If you just want to kind of dive in. Well, not just that, but they have like story stuff. Oh, okay. So, um, that's kind of nice. Like, it's they give you two pre made characters one's like a father and a daughter, um, that, and then each, each pair has like complementary skills. One is a couple of hackers that, um, I'll take that, I guess. For Gold. Sorry, I'm playing Battlegrounds. <laughs> okay, we're so, both distracted here. Level. Actually, this is nice because I'm distracted enough that I'm kind of not paying attention to the fact that I'm dying over and over again, which means that maybe I'll just learn what I need to do in this level and then, look, you see I got that backward shell jump, made it like four times now. Uh oh, ah. time pressure on that last one's rough. Um, you know what else sounds kind of like that would be the uh, Shadowrun games. Yeah, Shadowrun games are kind of like that too. Except for the, this is um, 
yeah, the, like the new Shadowrun games are real similar to that. Um, uh, but the so the anyway, the two characters I'm playing as now is they are two punks that ex escape from some sort of like it seems like some maybe kind of Nazi punk. Oh, cult. okay. And two two men. One is named Kickboy, and the other is named Bronco. <laughs> Okay. And they're alive, which is a really good one's a one's a melee guy that starts out with a great big wrench and the other guy uses uses sawed off shotguns okay like that's a good duo yeah it's a real good duo like that's the kind of thing that i'm enjoying about this new one um but as nazi punks did they fuck off <laughs> I, I think they i mean they did fuck off they left they escaped right. the cult or whatever so the the other games are all set in like post-apocalyptic Arizona and in this game you go to Colorado with a bunch of people from your ranger group and then um oh, oh damn it I think it's time to, time to change some stuff out of here that's not useful oh man I fucked up my come on, come on. Ah, if I just kept going I might have had that I can't even, I doubted myself, man. I flinched. I gotta find a slightly more consistent setup for the second jump because I just keep throwing myself on the munchers for no good reason. Come on, come on. Ah. I don't know. Uh, I'm happy I'm looking at my, my tablet. It seems like the video quality is stable, yeah, at least. Yeah, I know. Everything's good. I, I would have mentioned it if it had like, gone sideways or whatever. I don't know if I would describe the video quality as great, but at least the mo the movement seems to be holding together. Yeah, I know. You're not getting any... Which is what you want if you're playing a Kaizo Mario game, you know? It doesn't do you a lot of good to have beautiful still stills. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Ah. I totally screwed. Oh, well. That was a huge mistake. Ooh. But uh, but anyway, yeah, I, I'm I'm enjoying like the first two hours of Wasteland. So you, you go, your your guys leave Arizona, they go to Colorado, and then they're ambushed by some rocket launcher wielding like redneck cult people, and okay, most so of your team is killed except for your two the two characters that you either right. create or choose to start with, um, and then. You go and meet this guy whose name is the Patriarch, and he's like an ex-military kind of asshole dude. That seems bad. That is wielding. Uh, well, he was. He's. You're supposed to be trading. You're supposed to be doing some kind of mission for him in exchange for like important medical supplies or something. But he's like. Uh, he's like the shitty military guy. He he his yeah his weapon that he Sorry. wields is. Uh, it is. It's two statue fists that have been welded together. Uh, like to make like a giant mall ah, two uh, statue like, fists okay yeah oh like, to make like okay make a big hammer kind of thing yeah to make a big hammer like you put a shaft then, between them basically and yeah yep. they, they punch forward and backwards yeah so um i don't know it seems seems all right so far seems like a good setup is, is the writing good like in these games a lot more nah i didn't like i nah. never i didn't play a ton of the first one and the second one had like kind of okay writing but it was mostly just a a tactics RPG kind of thing, okay. and this seems like it's going a little bit more. It's okay. The writing's not very good in this game either. Yeah. So I don't know. I'll let you know. I don't really know, but All right. I'm more interested in what's going on story-wise in this one than I was. Than you have been in previous games. Yeah. I mean, if you like this game, maybe you should just go back and pick up Jagged Alliance 2 again. You know. I, the OG Fallout games are good comp for. Yeah, I liked Fallout 1 a lot. I didn't play the second one, though. Except when you're out of combat, you can just walk around. You don't have to follow the, the grid out of combat like you do in Fallout. Well, but you can go fast, so it doesn't matter that much if you're following the grid, I find. Yeah. Come on, come on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check, it, check me out. I made it to the last jump. How do I do this? No. Oh, almost. Okay. Wait 30 okay. Seconds. I'll make a theory for you. I've actually seen that last jump done. I, I watched Dode, who's an incredible Mario speedrunner, uh, like Kaizo guy. I, I watched him do this part because I didn't know how to do the backward shell jump. 
and I saw him do the yeah. next. The, the, there's like a, you have to do a, a double jump off that green shell at the very end, um, which does uh, not go to. Is that what the coins are meant to indicate? Kind of where you're supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. So we were talking about this, you know, Joe was saying how like, oh, aren't these games designed to be as mean as possible? But actually, I think that's not really true anymore. And, and more and more, they're actually including like visual cues to tell you what to do. So like a lot of these games still have hidden blocks, but they'll outline them and be like, hey, by the way, you don't want to go here. Because the goal is just to make you platform really well. It's not necessarily to laugh at your expense all the time. Yeah, I mean, well, if you're trying to get more people to play the games, then that makes sense, right? And what I didn't realize is this is actually a fairly young scene. Like, the original Kaizo Mario game is from maybe 2007 or 8. But, like, I think most of the hacks that people play these days are less than five years old. I think there's been, like, a really big uptick in part also because of Mario Maker kind of getting people's feet wet on, like, designing levels. saw someone saying today that you know they think Mario Maker 2 is kind of on the downswing and it's possible that those people who are really good at making levels will maybe migrate back to making Mario World hacks once there's less interest in playing them on Mario World Mario Maker 2. I'm trying to think of when the like when did the Saiyaban action games but that would have been. What's a Saiyaban action game? That's the Cat Mario. One of those. Were those like super hard or? Yeah they're they're ones that are they're like original Mario. Mario they're like a, They were like Flash games that came out of Japan, and they were like Flash things, but it was kind of similar to this, but it was way more about traps and stuff. Than yeah, yeah. About just really making fun of the player and stuff. That was so. That's where like the I want to be the guy came out of. Like, that oh, is it? Game. Oh, I see. That's very interesting. Yeah, because I read an article on Kaizo recently, and so I was like, Kaizo Hacks started with I Want to Be the Guy. And I was like, what? And then I looked it up, and I Want to Be the Guy is older than Kaizo Mario, I think. Right. Um, yeah, it's but from... I'm pretty sure Saiyaban Action was, like, before that. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, I think, I think you're right that Flash games maybe are where a lot of this comes from, because a lot of people made Flash... You know, in Flash, it's really easy to make 2D platformers, and I think since people were kind of... There's a lot, a lot of joking around and messing around with Flash games, so people would make hyper difficult stuff just to mess with the player. You know, a big part of playing Flash games was the surprises, you know, even the good ones, like Terry Cavanaugh's Flash games, where kind of like, you go into like, man, what's the trick gonna be? It's been a while since I played Don't Look Back. Did you uh, try that thing that downloads like all the Flash archives? Uh, I have not, but I'm aware of it. Um, I would like to check it out at some point. <sighs> Too early, baby. Slow down. At least I can get this original shell jump more than half the time now. It's like all of the... It's like the archive of that one big flash. I don't remember the details. I, I just heard them talking about it on the Bombcast, and it sounded like you could get, you know, a couple thousand flash games on your computer really easily. Which sounds both appealing and also horrifying, so... 64-bit Windows version 1.1. 10 gigabytes. Of the Flash Archive? That's from Flash... FlashGameArchive.com. I don't know if that's... I forget what it was called. It had, like, a name. There's a whole bunch of them. I don't know. Which is the one that you uh, necessarily want. But... I want to show off some other hacks, but I also kind of don't want to stop this, because I'm getting better. <laughs> Also, Julian's going to want to watch me play some Kaizo Mario tonight, and it'll be cool if I can show him a new level. I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I feel like there was all kinds of weird Mario hacks and stuff, but maybe that stuff doesn't go back that far. Well, there were, I think there were weird Mario hacks. Even I want to be the guy and the cat Mario stuff was like, hey, just like check out this weird thing. But like we were talking about this when I did the first Kaizo stream with, with Joe. There were weird Mario hacks when we were kids even. Yeah. You know, like stuff coming up, coming on bootleg cartridges out of Taiwan or who knows what. Um, and sometimes they were like useful, like here's just Mario with infinite lives or here's Mario but for some, you know, like everything's backwards or who knows what. Um... 
Anyway. Yeah, Kaizo is still, I guess, less mature than I realized. Okay, all right, we got a shot here. Nope, we don't have a shot. <laughs> so, you know what I spent a couple hours doing earlier today? Making two enormous brownie cheesecakes. Oh, nice. I hope so, yeah. You guys having a party or something? Uh, it's actually a belated thing for my birthday that I'm going to bring to work, because in, in, at theory, the theory at work is that you bring your own birthday desserts. Um, so, birthday was like 10 days ago or so, and this thing has taken me a little while to put together. So, figured I'd take the long weekend and see if I could finish it. Sounds good. Had to make a big thing of brownies. Uh, I think I did that two nights ago, actually. And then you chop them up into squares, and you put them inside a cheesecake. And then I want to put on like a kind of ganache frosting type thing on top of the cheesecake. And bring it to work tomorrow. And we're just enough people that I wasn't... Like at work, we can... Sometimes we can be almost 20 people. Uh, and so I wasn't comfortable just bringing one, but I'm pretty sure two is going to be way overkill. Because these things are super dense and huge. Everybody can pick away at it for a few days. Well, it means that hopefully I should be able to bring a little bit home for the family. Ah, oh, damn that. that backward shell jump, man. Do I have to hit that a little before I get to the top of my jump? Problem. I need to analyze a little bit. Yeah, is there a, if you is there a way to like put a checkpoint wherever you want so you can just practice? There isn't. The there is not. No, because this is like actual Super Mario World. Aside from the fact that there are, you know, people program in little changes to it, but I've never seen a if Kaizo. You're on an emulator, did you just put a a, a drop a save state. I could, yeah. yeah. But then I'd be playing with another different feel, and you know, like. That's fine. I just like. Because you're, like, seems like you kind of got the first two parts of this. Yes. So. And again, that's why it's cool to have Learn to Kaizo, is that a lot of these tricks you can just load up and learn to Kaizo and just do the one thing until you get it. Yeah. But, you know, to be fair, learning how to do them in the pressure setting is part of the thing, too, right? Because, like, a real difficult Kaizo hack is going to have you doing, you know, a minute of solid platforming before you have a chance to save your game and hit a checkpoint. So you can't freeze just because... There you go. Just because you're in a slightly difficult spot, you can't choke, you know? So how are we going to do this? Uh, we're back at the green shell jump here. I drop down, bop it, and then I need to hit it again as it's flinging up from the rebound block. So I guess, oh, or I could just completely waste my attempt on the Muntress. So that also is a way you can go. Oh, it's too early. I hate that wall. If that wall was like one brick smaller, it would be so much easier. Boop. Come on. Nope. In other news, I did 77 consecutive squats in Ring Fit yesterday, and my legs were fucking destroyed. You still mess on with that? Uh, I'm in the last chapter. Yes. Chapter 13, which apparently is the one where they destroy your legs for you. Hmm. This site has almost 60,000 Flash games. Some claims I have 40,000. Why would I take 40,000 when I could have 60,000, you know? Well, maybe they're not all the same. The thing with flash games is I really want vetting. <laughs> I, just, I don't just want a raw dump of all the flash games out there. I mean, 60,000 is a lot of fucking games. Yes. I wonder how many I'd even remember. Uh, 
Like, I don't... Maybe I'm not quite the right age group to have played a lot of Flash games, you know? Like, I feel I feel if Flash games were a thing when you were, like, in high school computer lab, I bet you played way more of them than I did. Because mm -hmm. I was been in university by the time Flash games were starting to get big. I played a whole bunch of shareware games when I had dead time in computer lab. <laughs> Apogee, man. The original Duke Nukem. Commander Keen. Prince of Persia wasn't shareware, but I played a lot of it. I saw, apparently Apogee has a Twitter account and they're doing some kind of re-release of one of their games that I didn't play much when they're recoloring it. I went back and looked at the original graphics and for some reason the main character's skin was gray, which is kind of off-putting. So it's like they're recoloring it in, into be more like 16-bit as opposed to the weird... Like, the CGA color palette is just a strange time. Uh, not CGA. CGA is four colors, and that is a strange time. But, you know, most of those Apogee shareware games were using uh, EGA, 16 color. But there were still better choices you could make. Like, go back and look at an old King's Quest game or something, and nobody had a gray face. I don't know why they decided they needed that color for something else. It was an undead person. I mean, you're in space, so maybe he's some kind of alien. Oh, come on, I want to make that backwards jump. Alright, you know what? I'm not even mad at this game, but let's just do something else for a little while. And uh, So the other one that I've spent some time with was Quickie World 2. Which I heard was a really good way to get into... Kaizo hacks, and uh, yeah, I've been enjoying this one. But you have to play as Luigi, so I can't play it for my son because he doesn't like Luigi. <laughs> Why? I mean, he's got good taste, I guess. What's wrong with Luigi, though? I couldn't tell you. He's the wrong color, I guess. So, oh right, all uh, right. So this is the song, uh, the one that uses a song from Delta Room, which is nice. Good song. I have forgotten how this one goes. This one doesn't have the instant retry. It has retry or exit, and personally, I much prefer when they just throw you right back into it without even asking. Oh, just to not take you right back to the beginning of a thing. Of your, well, so, like, Baby Kaizo Mario just immediately puts you back at your previous checkpoint whenever you die. You don't even have to, like, tell it you want to. And I don't understand what the point of this is, because you can always start select to leave a level, so... Why not just have that as an option, and then don't make me press the button every time I die? It would be a little better if I was paying a bit more attention. I like the kind of uh, weird, like, dark outline color scheme in this level. What is that floating thing? Floating? Oh, I forgot to hit the shell. Thing that you're trying to spin jump off. That's a boulder. It's um It's like the Bonnie Mole boulder. No, it's the digging chucks in the underground yeah. levels. Don't ask me why the football guys have shovels. It's so nice to have different music to listen to when you're doing these things. It goes a, goes a long way towards making it less frustrating. If this was just all the main theme to Mario World, I would go nuts. So this is the kind of stuff I think that if you're, you know, if you're someone who's just played regular Mario World and you watch someone do a level like this, it looks hard, but also, like, it makes sense. You know, it's like, okay, jumping over the thing, the jumps are tight and a little tricky, but, you know, there's nothing too weird and mystical happening here. But there are some Kaizo levels where even now I look at them like, how the hell is anyone supposed to do that? Or if they'll do, like, a really fast series of moves and I don't even under- I can't even parse what I saw. Oh, I know I missed. Good. What do I do with the shell again? 
Oh, I killed the boulder with it. Progress! You gotta learn how to switch your thumb between the two different run buttons. For when you're switching from spin jumping to regular jumping. Oh, I almost had that. I should have spin jumped. time it is. You know what time it is? Uh, it's quarter after three. Alright, got another 15 minutes before I gotta take off. Let's see if I can finish a level in this game before time runs out. Huh? Where are you off to today? Uh, just the park. Oh, it still doesn't really look that nice out, but... Alright. Oh, how do I do that? There's a house for sale over there I want to go cruise by. Oh, that was a checkpoint right there. Oh yeah. And, uh, yep. You still looking at like are they are you looking at fixer uppers or are there places that you can. I'm a little bit of everything. There's not there isn't a lot at the moment. Not that much choice. People are snatching up cheap stuff pretty fast because of how cheap loans are right now. Right. I'd say the housing market around here basically didn't slow down at all because of coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, like it shut it shut down completely for the two or three months when it wasn't really safe to show houses and then it sprang back as all the people who couldn't go shopping during that time were like super desperate to uh, finally have yeah. a chance to buy something i mean there's like plus there's like literally nothing to rent anywhere here either so it wasn't it wasn't even like this like a couple of years ago but... yeah that's getting to be a big problem in montreal too rental is getting to be brutal around here it used to be when my brother lived here like 20 years ago he said that they would give you, like, a, the first month free off your lease just so you'd sign up for a year. And then when I lived here, there was plenty of cheap rent around, but they weren't desperate. And now, since then, there's just been, there's just nowhere anymore for you to rent. I mean, it's a housing crisis pretty much everywhere. Nobody's building anything because you can't afford to. Alright, we're getting this, man. We're getting this. But, I mean, like, prices have gone up just in the time, like, places that... Like prices have inflated, like some some cases, like more than ten thousand dollars over the course of the last like six to eight months, just since I've been watching. Wow. Yeah. Which is like makes it difficult to. But I don't know that they're actually gonna go back down either. So I don't know. Depends on so much. Ah, oh, <laughs> munchers. But also, it's been like, oh, here's one that looks kind of neat, and then it's like sold like two days later or whatever. So. Well, that's how the when we bought our house in Montreal, that's how the market was at the time. It was like, if there's a place you like, you basically bid within the first 24 hours, or you're not getting a bid in. Yeah. And now it's at the point where, like, I have I have coworkers who would like to buy something, and they're saying like, if you don't bid over the asking price, you don't have a chance. Because, you know, like, whatever, if you find a nice place, there are going to be 20 offers within the first 24 hours, and someone is going to overbid by, like, 10% of the asking cost. Yeah, I don't think it's quite to that point yet, but... Yeah. It's getting kind of brutal around here. Montreal is not, has not been an expensive city compared to a lot of cities. Like, you know, <laughs> when we go to places like D.C. and in Boston, you know, if you talk to people who live there... The rents there are way more than my mortgage is right now. Mm -hmm. um, but Montreal is getting to the point now where it's no longer going to be so cheap. So how the fuck do I do this? Oh, I gotta, okay, I gotta just jump over the Kaizo block real quickly and then land and then jump again. Oh man, that's tight. At least on this level, I'm not stymied by one particularly really difficult uh, shell jump. Yeah, you keep dying in different places. Well, I have a feeling that that little, mer that little Ferris wheel at the end is probably going to get me a bunch, but... Oh, man. I may not have any progress to show for the stream, but the real progress is within. I get to see that cool tree level. That was a really cool level, yeah. And I kind of rocked that, I gotta say. 
I mean, you're a lot better at this than when you were streaming it, like, two weeks ago or whatever. Thank you. Oh, jeez. What is the timing on that? I guess I gotta get on the bottom platform as early as possible, and then jump off of it as early as possible. There's a lot of do things as fast as you can in Kaizer levels. Yeah. That tree level being a very good example of just, like, you have, like, about a quarter of a second of dead space if you want to make it to the end without messing up. Hack seems really well made, and I like the difficulty balance is pretty good, mm -hmm. um, at least for now. We'll see. Like you know, Learn to Kaizo started off pretty friendly as well, and has gotten a lot harder in recent levels. Oh, that was really close. That was really close. If I had just jumped again, like a tenth of a second faster, I think I would have made that. I like this, like. Candy blue shell. Not a color you see normally. No. Isn't there. No, no. Yoshi is like a dark blue. Mm. Um. Yeah. Well, he's not that color. Oh, I forget the spin jump. Okay, one checkpoint. Can I get one checkpoint in the next 10 minutes before I stop? I need to find a ROM hack where I can make Luigi red so that I can play this for my kid because I think he'd like this one a lot. <laughs> it is Mario. <laughs> well, that's honestly, I was, this is my favorite Luigi is Super Mario World Green Mario. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, ha, ha! Got it. Oh, okay, fast platform. Didn't know that was going to be a fast platform. I guess there's actually a warning that it's going to be a fast platform. You see them drop into place, you can kind of see how fast they're going to go. So again, like, that's pretty nice. Like, that's that's Kaizo trying to show you what, what you're going to get into before you make the jump. Okay, how much time do I have here? Ten minutes. Whoa, lord, okay. Somehow, that... now entered the puzzle portion of this level where I have to figure out what exactly I'm supposed to try to do. Mm, I don't I don't particularly like this bit here with the falling platform. Oh okay just gotta go fast. Just gotta just gotta Sonic the Hedgehog this. the final, not the final area, but the, uh, the fifth chapter in Paper Mario. Oh, today. nice. Isn't that a cool it, area? It is, yeah. The Shangri Spa, Spa or whatever. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, I like that one a lot, and I like uh, having Kamek as your partner for a while. Yeah. Man, I, I took a lot of screenshots as I was playing that game, just because I like the dialogue so much. And I just went yeah. back through and looked at them again, and there's so much good writing in that game. I've, you know, I've very recently played both the first two Paper Mario games, which people love, and they're good, but they're not nearly this funny. Yeah. They're a little bit more fun to play, I think, though. Yeah, the, the, especially the, especially Thousand Year Door, I think, has got a nice depth to the mechanics. Uh, the first one is a little on the, kind of, simple side. This first one's also very short, so it doesn't have time to develop as much. Where are you going to see this house with? Uh, um, my mom and brother. We're going to go to the county park and go for a walk. And and spend some time picnic. outside. And I really I didn't do much this weekend because my back was bothering me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So. It's 
So it's been kind of a bust, but I feel a little better, so. That works out. Don't get munched. Alright, I don't want to get greedy, but if I can get an exit in the next seven-ish minutes, that'd be really cool. But I got a checkpoint, so at least I made some visible progress on the stream. <laughs> oh, that, I don't know why I'm having more trouble with that jump off the moving blocks than I was before. Come on. Alright. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. That's too far. That's too far. New best, though. If you just stop, does it, like, hang out there fine, or... What, the... the... Moving block jump? Or is it just like you, like, tiptoe over that? It? Hmm. You can't just sit on the moving blocks because it'll dump you when it swings to the far left again. Uh. So you can't, you can't take your time and go for a second cycle, as it were. Not to get too speedrunnery on you, but, uh... I, I think I can figure that one out. Alright, I'm making good progress here, but that next jump is a killer. Jesus. And then can you ride that platform to the bottom and then jump from underneath, or...? I, um, I mean, it can, but... Oh, oh, you know what? I did, and it wound up being probably the answer. Oh, I got killed there. So yeah, I did like a last second spin jump off of that platform before it ditched me, and that actually worked. So, thanks. Yeah, that's kind of what I... Cool. It's getting your heart rate up. Uh, I, I mean, not really. But I played through Super Mario World. Uh, I like the way those platforms react, though, when you land on them. <laughs> the brown ones. Uh, so oh man, there's the exit. Dive down and then jump back up. Yeah, I, I have to use that somehow, but I haven't figured out how, because the exit's right past there. I could do this, man. Five minutes? We got five minutes to get this exit. Come on. Let's go. Oh, right. <sighs> the relationship between the two gray platforms, the, the, the slow falling one and the rotating one. Oh, no, sorry. The swinging back and forth one and the rotating one. But this seems to be the same every time that I get to that spot. I can't quite figure out why. Must have to do with when I get them to appear on screen, like they... Like, I have more luck if I actually sit on the, the swinging one for longer before I jump. If I go really fast, it seems like it unsyncs them in a way that is not good for me. Ooh. Okay. All-Star Baseball 2002. All-Star Baseball 2003 featuring Derek Dieter. All-Star Baseball 2004 featuring Derek Dieter. All-Star Baseball 2005 featuring... <laughs> can you uh, can you uncheck a couple of these, or is that against your? Uh, I don't know. Is that against the spirit of the There's thing? There's already a couple of games that had two different versions, which I'm guessing were like the original one and probably like a patched like repress repressing or something like that. I mean, on, even on cartridge games, I see that a lot. You know, like I've been loading up a lot of ROMs onto the Mister and things like that, and you'll you'll very often see that even like on cartridge games. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I wanted ATV Off-Road Fury version 1.0 or 3.1. Oh, I mean, clearly 3.1 is the... I, I oh, that was so close! Did you see how close I mean, that was? the file size is identical for that one, so... It does make you wonder what the difference is, but I'm sure you can find a forum that will have all that explained for you. Maybe I should, yeah, I should... ATV Off-Road Fury... Version differences? Version differences... <laughs> Real fun rabbit hole to go down for your long holiday weekend. Okay, this is really fun. This level is like super fun, except for the part where I die. Like the 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 funny thing is, the better you get at this level, the more fun it is. Like you'd think that the repetition would get in and you'd get frustrated, but like when you get to the point where you can do two thirds of it in a single run without failing all the time, it's it's just really entertaining. ATV Off-Road Fury accelerates onto mobile, August 2006. Uh-huh. Oh, do you think one of them has, like, some sort of mobile bonus features, like Nikia branding for I your... I I don't think. Maybe they had some kind of partnership. Well, oh, that's not the jump I wanted to do. All right, it works. I guess I can spin jump all those if I want to. 
it's possible that nobody cares enough about ATV Offroad Fury to have documented what I'm sure that I'm sure somebody like, does care enough, but uh... but not enough to tweak the Google come on, algorithm. Come on. Or is it possible to find? I hope I'm doing the right thing at the end of the level here because I don't have time I to bet, learn a new. I bet Joe knows someone who knows. <laughs> There! Oh! Yes! You see that? Hmm. I mean, not yet, because I'm, you know, 30 seconds. Yeah, well, you watch that stream for some hot Luigi action. <laughs> Alright, that's gonna do it for me. I, can't, I don't think I'm gonna top that today. Oh god, the name of this castle is Roll the Bones. It's the worst Rush I mean, album. You gotta, gotta load it, load it up and just see what's in there. Alright, alright. All right. There you go, nice. Got it. Oops, I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. There's no floor apparently. How does that work? Okay, there's a falling platform. I think this actually might be rush themed. I can't hear the music. <laughs> is that oh, well, I don't know. The the red and white dice and oh, black yeah. and white aesthetic is very roll the bones. It is. Yep. I don't know what. <laughs> Are there other Rush-inspired levels in this game? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, but I haven't been paying close attention to the names. I told you the other day that there was one that was a Dave Brubeck song uh, from yeah. Time Out. I mean, isn't there... I want to say... I, I can't find this fucking... It's such a bummer. Oh! But isn't it isn't like the video for Roll the Bones like dice and skeletons? I think. Um, I know that in concert they had like an animated skeleton man who did the rap section. Dutch because there. Roll they're... the Bones music. Because there is a, a rap section in Roll the Bones. <sighs> but I can't recognize. I, so first of all, I honestly don't know that album that well, which I'm not ashamed of at all. Um, but I, I can't recognize. Um... As I did with a lot of other not great Rush albums. And you what? I just remember this music video being like totally crazy. So this doesn't sound like Rush music in the background, which I feel like is a real missed opportunity. <laughs> Why would it be Joe's favorite Rush album? It's the one that sounds the least like Rush. I suppose. Don't ask me how that guy can enjoy 10 minute long Cure songs and then pretend that prog rock is pretentious and full of itself. Alright, uh, I'm not here to dump on Joe's taste in music. Uh, I'm here to play Kaizo, and actually I'm not here to play Kaizo, I'm here to stop playing Kaizo. So, Eric, um, thank you very much for accompanying me on this one level clear in an hour and a quarter. Um, I hope you had fun. I had fun. I did. Um, you did good, right? Well, hope so. That's the, that's the whole point. Uh, I guess we're out, and we'll probably be back Wednesday night, just like usual. So, uh, hey. see you later, folks. Gonna fade out now. Fade out. Yeah.